What's up guys, it's Charles here with Rocket Punch RC. Here we are, we're doing a, um, not so much a, a review, uh, I might just show you footage of that at some other time, uh, since you're probably interested in this VTX. But what I do want to show you today is the way I set up, um, what do you call that, smart audio. Alright, so first of all, let's explain what this is. Uh, again, it's a VTX, it's the AKK. Um, you might find it in different forms, but this is the FX2. It's, uh, you know, obviously 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, it's got 40, I believe, 40 channels. Yes, 40 channels. Um, it goes from pit mode to 25 uh, milliwatts to 200, then to 500 to 800. Pit mode doesn't uh, default by pressing the buttons as you normally would. Not exactly sure how to go into pit mode, but that's the whole reason we're doing this video because you can actually get into pit mode. Uh, much easier and much less annoying. Now, if you uh, have already been flying quadcopters, multi-rotors, whatever, you probably know all this stuff, but since I am relatively new and there's probably people out there uh, who are at my level, which is just pretty much beginning, you may be interested in this. Now, what I have found is a whole channel thing, all right? So I come from the old school RC where everybody had to make sure nobody was on conflicting channels. You know, you had to take a tag off the wall if you had 75 megahertz, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know the 2.4 gigahertz did away with that really with the radios, but now we have we face that with the, with the video um, So you don't want to interfere with somebody who's a hundred feet in the air and all that stuff But anyway one of the biggest challenges is really showing up and then finding out somebody's on your channel and then you look at your You know your your quad and you realize damn. I really can't get to the button uh, to change the channel so um, That's the whole point of this video is to show you how to do that via uh, your goggles. Now I know you can also do this uh, using Lua script on your Tyrannus, but we're not going to get into that until I set that up. But uh, we will show you how to do it on the OSD. So anyway, this is the box. This is the uh, VTX I'm using, and I love this thing because it looks really high quality. I don't have it in hand because it's inside the uh, my furry bee here, which I'll show you in a second. But the quality looks really good. Uh, the the specs look amazing too. And so far, I've been very happy, and the price is just right. I get it off Amazon for like 22 bucks, uh, you know, prime shipping and all that. So very good. Anyway, it comes in a little box like this. I'll show you the uh, little manual. It does have this uh, was it the CMMX connector, which a lot of people don't like. You can solder it uh, so it doesn't pull out. But honestly, when I try to pull it out, I got to give it a little bit of force. I'm sure a crash puts a lot more force in my hand, but you can if you wanted to. Uh, otherwise, just check your copter every once in a while before you fly, after a crash. I uh, believe this down here is the little microphone, which I'm not using. However, one of the ports here on the connector we are using uh, for the smart audio feature. I believe with 800 milliwatts, you do have to uh, run it off battery or a 12-volt uh, power source. Um, it does say here OSD configuration, which is what we're looking at today in just a moment. Uh, I don't mean to review this thing, but... Um, again, if you're interested, otherwise you can forward through. Um, it's got 7 to 24 volt input with 5 volt output. And I'm going to get into my setup in just a moment. Uh, it does tell you how to select everything. It gives you all the channels here. How to exit pit mode doesn't really tell you how to get in pit mode. It just says while you're in pit mode, uh, it'll have the letter P. And then back here is just a little diagram so you know where you're wiring everything up. And product specifications. Anyway, so I'm going to show you uh, my Furry B X215, which, uh, first of all, I just want to thank uh, Josh over at Collection DX for actually giving this to me. Uh, Gearbest sent it out. I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever, but they did send it out to that site, which I do reviews on, and they are not known for doing reviews on anything RC. It's more action figures, and I happen to be a reviewer there. And anyway, this came across my lap, and it really got me going in this hobby. But anyway, here he is. No propeller, so it's a little easier to work on. Uh, you guys probably seen way too many reviews on this. But one of the things uh, that was, you know, like a negative from a couple of reviewers. I'm surprised it wasn't with everybody. There's a couple of reviews out there, especially Andy RC that tested the output on the uh, stock VTX, which is this here. I believe this is the uh, UFO FPV something. This is a TX35B. It normally does have an outer case here, or probably an RF shield or some kind of heat sink. They take it off so they can fit it on the uh, ferry bee. And, and I think, you know, if you put a spacer, you wouldn't need to do that, but they did that. 
But the problem is, um, you know, he hooked up one of those uh, milliwatt readers or whatever, and it was getting a very low uh, output. As a matter of fact, one of the videos I saw was like 0 0.7 on 25 milliwatts. Pretty horrid. Uh, I didn't really have any breakup issues. Uh, the only issue I did have was the first time I flew it, I crashed really bad, and I knocked off the little number here, which doesn't show a channel. So, obviously, that sucks if uh, you're on the field and you need to change the channels. Second of all, even if you had the little number thing here, the numbers, the uh, channel does not match what you see on your goggles. In other words, if you set the band and channel here and set your goggle to that band and channel, all you get is static. But if you do a search, it'll pop up, you know, with the screen nice and clear, but a different band, different channel. So that's a lot of confusion. Didn't want to deal with that now that I am flying with other people. And on top of that, you know, you can't even see anything. So, um, you know, according to a lot of people, this is pretty much rubbish. There are some people that are getting good output with this. I don't know how to determine which ones. I don't want to spend the $150 on a machine just to check if something works. I'd rather just spend 21 and get something of higher quality. And as you can see, it is now installed in here. It is branded uh, AKK there. Uh, you'll notice I had to do a little weird routing with the antenna because the way this antenna is put on the Ferry B, it points straight down into the stack. So the end of the antenna, even on the standard one, it's folded. Like it's just, uh, you know, it's like pushed down like this, you know, because there's no space. So what I had to do is space uh, to fit this one and not have such a, uh, a sharp angle out of the, or, you know, the antenna. I had to put spacers here. I put, I do believe those are just five millimeter spacers, aluminum spacers, standoffs, whatever you want to call them. And I pushed the antenna out a bit. Uh, and it kind of still looks all right. It lines up with everything else. So it's, it's pretty nice, I guess. But the only thing is that the antenna has to come out around and into the back. And I'm sure I can do something else, but that's what I have. And the second thing I did, uh, because this does have a little number display, where is the, oh, the number display is right back there. You'll notice the antenna is kind of like around it. You want to make sure it's not on it or pushing against it in case you crash and the pressure pushes it off. So you want to relieve some pressure. If you do this same setup, obviously your setup may vary. But what I have done is surrounded the uh, number display with liquid electrical tape just to absorb some of that impact and keep it from flying off. I mean, if it breaks, it breaks, <laughs> whatever. But um, yeah, so that's how I have it set up. So there's a couple things I want to do while I'm in here. I'm going to show you guys how to wire up the, um, the smart audio so you can check your goggles. And I also want to make sure I unpinch this wire. It's right in one of the uh, standoffs here, which I didn't realize, so my mistake. But we will need a two millimeter uh, wrench here. Whoa, almost fell off my chair. All right, I use MIPs all the time. Um, if you do have this model or any model that has uh, anything threading into aluminum, you definitely want to make sure you also have, uh, what's that called? The Loctite. All right, so what we want to do is remove these. I just use different colors here just so I know which one. Sometimes I get confused as to which one it is. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but I just switch them just because I wanted to. Um, so we're going to take this off. Now, by the way, I am running a Betaflight 3.2, not 3.1. I know there's videos out there that tell you um, you have to have 3.1. I think they mean at least 3.1. I think it's 3.1. I'm not sure which exact version, but whatever. You should have the latest version anyway. And if you do that, you should be able to do this. Now, the Ferry B, all you got to do is remove this. And, oh, I got to pull the antenna out the back here. And then just lay it off to the side. Now, the Smart Audio, uh, it's going to be a wire coming out of this harness. Now, the only downside is that if you have removed the wires, as I did, because, uh, I'm trying to get light here, you didn't need them. Hopefully you didn't throw them out. If you if you already have this, if not, don't get rid of the very last wire, right? Which would be all the way to the right if you're looking at the clip on top. Uh, if you do remove them and you have them, you you will you will need to clip it back in. So it's just a matter of me clipping this back in and getting it wired to my flight controller. So I'm just going to take a moment here to get that wire. Now I also wanted to touch on something while I'm here. By the way, uh, I found the harness with 
a spare wire with the clip on there. Thank God I unclipped it instead of cutting it like I did these. Um, you know, depending on your setup, I'm running a Kutu, uh, can't even say it, Kakute F4, the non AOI. All right, so uh, trying to see where the wires I want to show you are. But well, somewhere around here, I believe it's these over here, if I'm not mistaken. In any case, uh, the VTX I have wired to 5 volt. And why did I do that? Well, because the Kakute F4 does not have uh, pads for 12 volt or battery or anything like that. Well, I mean, it kind of does. Where you wire the, you know, the battery from or the power from the ESC to the flight controller. Uh, but I I tried that and I I saw a little bit of noise, so I put it back to where it was. The only thing, the reason I'm pointing it out, because it's, it's the same way this was set up from the factory, and um, and I thought that might have been the issue they were having with the output, but they, they have it hooked up to 5 volt, even though it's rated for 7 to 24. Uh, you know, the one I just put in, it works. It still works. I still get um, good reception, uh, but I probably can't use the 800 milliwatts since it does say 12 volts. I may revert back, but that's just something... If you guys run into that or if you're putting it into a similar uh, setup as I am but I left it on 5 volts uh, I don't have a way of measuring the output so I'm just going by you know flying out in the field and not getting uh, a lot of breakup and a little bit but uh, the most I got was on 25 milliwatts and I have crappy antennas which I just recently upgraded but anyway just wanted to point that out so uh, what we're gonna do we were going to reattach on the harness this little wire now we are going to remove this you'll notice I'm using a two millimeter and you're like why why would you have metal screws on the top that is a good question you shouldn't really have them but uh, in this case they're not touching all the way through the ground but you do have to be careful and I probably should just replace them while I'm at it just get a good kit you know you can get a lot of stuff I get is pretty much Amazon because I can't wait a week to receive stuff or a month and a half gear best uh, to receive things so anyway take this off just be careful don't short anything out I mean there's no battery plugged in but don't scrape anything but here's a closer look at the VTX you can see where I put the liquid tape, see the shiny black stuff, it's normally not black there, it's just white. But I did put the uh, liquid tape there. Uh, it, and, and again, it's it's nice, it's nicely made. Doesn't feel cheap at all, or look cheap at all. Uh, so we're looking here at the flight controller. So you want to look for at least this one, T, whoops, I'm out of camera there. You want to look for T6. Now T6 in this camera doesn't like to focus too much is right there just pointing right at it that's where you want to solder the other end of this green wire now if you um, are just soldering any type of wire you want to use the silicone wire see how these are like noodly you don't want to use the PVC ones I mean if, if that's all you have that's all you have but really invest in a box of this okay these are little wires I believe this is, uh, I don't know if it's 30 gauge, I don't remember what I, well, I think it's 30 gauge, right? And you get all different colors, and you'll see they're just as noodly. Uh, but let me go ahead and get that done. All right, guys, I'm going to give it a shot here, just so you can see how I do this, just in case you're worried about doing it. I just applied a little flux paste. You can put whatever type of flux you want, if you want to do that, just over the pad. Uh, it allows the solder to heat up quick and whatever. So I applied a, a little teeny bit of solder there and made sure that it's stuck well. It's nice and shiny. Then I also uh, tinned the wire, which is this green one. Kind of just wrapped it around here. It's a little bit messy, but uh, it should uh, hold up well. And we want to just, you might want to use tweezers too. Hopefully that's good enough here. And we use a side since this is really pointy. Sometimes it doesn't generate enough heat. And that's it. You saw what I did? Boom! Done! Yeah, you like that! But that's all you really got to do with that, guys. That's it. And then just make sure, especially if you're using the uh, Kakute F4, since it has a floating IMU, you definitely want to route the wires in such a way where it's not touching. I'm sure it goes without saying, but always double check your wiring. 
All right, so I got everything back together. Um, I can't really recommend this enough right here. This is a smoke stopper. So you can see it's something very easy that you can build. Just need a couple of XT60 uh, connectors, an automotive lamp. All right, and what you do is you plug it in you know, to your quad, and then you plug in the battery. If this light goes on, and I'm talking like it goes on and nothing else happens, definitely want to disconnect right away uh, because that means you have a short and that can happen when you're wiring stuff even something as simple as what I just wired you know uh, I had to snip a couple of wires and strip them so maybe little hair follicles of wire fell on the circuit board I uh, definitely want to take care so anyway like I said we got to plug into uh, beta flight here connect the quad make sure everything looks good um, then we're gonna head over ports in the UARTs and you're gonna go over to the right here to the drop down menu and select TBS smart audio and um, that's it so we want to bring up the um, the OSD so uh, if you're mode 2 you want to uh, throw the left stick all the way to the left middle left and you want to do the right stick all the way up so since I'm using mode 2 Let's go ahead and uh, center the throttle and push left and then push up. All right, so we've entered there. You'll see it says features. Um, how is it again? Oh, yeah. On the right stick for mode two, left stick mode one. Uh, just do the opposite for mode one. I'm not going to repeat myself constantly. Um, so for features here, uh, well, you want to be on features. So click right. And you'll see you have VTX and VTX TR or VTX SA. Let's go back and VTX TR. If you're using VTX uh, or you're using Smart Audio, you want to use the SA, and if you're using Tramp, you want to use uh, the TR. So I didn't actually show you that in the beta flight, but you'll, I guess, it's self-explanatory. Uh, so I'm using Smart Audio. So we'll click here, and you'll see it says Band. We can move down to Channel, Frequency, Power and then set uh, config and back. So let's say for example, uh, I'm primarily gonna be using it, uh, you know, probably to switch, you know, bands and channels. So what you can do here is either go to channel and left and right will, you know, change the channel, which is very convenient. And you can see it also moves around, fat shark, race band, all that stuff. And another cool feature is power. Uh, for example, here I can hit left and go to 25, go back up to uh, 200 using left and right, 500, and even though it uh, registers here as 800, I don't know if it's outputting 800, I do need a 12 volt source, which I'm not using at the moment. Uh, you, What is set here? Oh, you wanna confirm? I'm not gonna confirm, since I don't wanna save that. But let's go back here a second. All right, so uh, we also wanna check it, well, actually, let me turn this down. I don't actually want to have it on 800 while I'm showing you guys. Matter of fact, let's go in here under config. You'll see it does have pit mode. So I don't actually know what this means, guys. P-I-R. have no clue, uh, but I am in uh, pit mode. I'm in, yep, pit mode. If we do the TR, the tramp, you can also uh, select pit. This one's easier. So see it says on and off. Does that say PIR like the other one? Now, what can that mean? Pirate? What does that mean? I have no clue what that means. But same thing. You can switch the power. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, what else is there to do? Uh, you obviously even want to set it. You confirm. And that's it. That's pretty much the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. hope it was informational. Uh, I hope it didn't feel too long because I like to blab a lot about this stuff. But that's it. That's it, guys. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Again, I am new at this, so I'm sure this stuff here... Uh, you guys can teach me. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that's it. Uh, until next time, guys. Bye.